Hello, everybody. I'm very happy to be here today. And I'm very happy for several reasons. Uh, one of them is that it's actually too first for me. It's first time I do a virtual conference. So I apologize in advance if I'm not so good at it, but I will do my best. And the second one is um, it's the first time I participate to the Responsible Business Week. So very excited about this session. And I will start right now by sharing my slides. So give me a second. Here we are. So today I will be talking to you about the 40 billion tons challenge. I know it's a catchy phrase and it looks big, but actually it looks big because it is big. And I hope to get you through and explain to you why it's such a challenge, but more than that, why it's a fantastic opportunity for our sector. So I will start by explaining who we are. Um, we are a global leader in sustainable and innovating building materials and solutions. And we are active in four segments. Cement, which is our biggest historical one, aggregates. And then you put aggregates and cement together, you do concrete. And we are developing more and more a solution and products because it has also great potential when it comes to sustainability. But what's very important to understand about our company is the fact that we are present in 75 countries and we do have industrial activities in all these countries that it makes 70,000 people are working for us. Um, we were very honored and very proud when two weeks ago we received from Systematics our rating ranking us first amongst more than 100 construction material companies, but more than that, being the first one who reached the low risk uh, rank. Now, our sustainability strategy is on four main, four main pillars. One is climate and energy. We have reduced our CO2 per ton of cement tissues by about 27% since 1990. We are leading in the sector with that number, and we have a target of 2030 that has been um, qualified by SBTI, Science Based Targets Initiative, as following the two degree scenario. We use some water in our process, in our industrial process, and we have targets to reduce that water. Again, we are very low, we have reduced almost 6% last year. And finally, living in all these 75 countries, we are in contact with a lot of communities and it's very important that we share value with them. But the topic of today will be obviously circular economy and the waste we reuse. Last year, we reused 48 million tons. That makes us the biggest waste reuse company in the world. If I go back now to explain a little bit more about our industry um, and the challenges we are facing, we expect the population to grow by 22% by 2050. 60% of the infrastructure need for that growth does not exist today. What it actually means in, in real terms, and I am French, so I hope my example will talk to you as well. It means we have to build Paris every week for the next 50 years. So, and then I'm not talking, of course, about infrastructure such as um, dams that we need to develop to have more hydroelectricity or the fit for the uh, wind power, etc. So, it's not just housing and buildings, but it's also all the infrastructure that goes with it. Um, so, if we look at it, what it means, it means that. Concrete is needed. The humanity needs concrete for its development and for all the projects they have. But it also means it's a fantastic opportunity for companies like us to build back better. And I think it's fantastic to see that we have the G20 leaders who get an incredible five trillion pledge to actually fight the economic consequences of COVID-19. And we know, we know that infrastructure and building will be completely at the heart of that recovery. The other very interesting information is the fact that we extract about 90 billion tons of 
Virgin Matayor from the US every single year, 40 billion of it just for housing and infrastructure. It's huge. It's huge and as I showed in my previous slide, we know that's not going to stop. And this is where finding a way to reduce this um, extraction of raw material is so important. And one way to, to, to do it is actually to look at all the buildings that today exist that will be this, uh, demolished in the near future and use those to feed back in the system. In some countries, we reckon we can go up to 30%. It's a matter of having the right supply chain and being able to put it back in our system. But it's a key element of our circular economy strategy because we have to reduce that amount of virgin resources that we are taking out of our planet. If we do that, the circular economy can enable up to 40% of reduction of CO2 in big industries such as as in cement, such as plastic, steel, and aluminum. Now, if, if we look what it means for us, how we do it, it's several things. Waste for us is a resource, resource sorry. 48 million tons of resource that we use every year. Some of it, we put it directly in our cement process as a one-to-one -one, um, replacement. So super easy. Some of it, we use it to phase out fossil fuel. So if you think of today, we have to heat up our kiln. Our kiln is where it's kind of a huge oven where we make the cement. We have to heat it up, up to 1,500 degrees. Very, very hot. Way hotter than any oven you have in your house. And to do that, we use a lot of fuel. So when we replace fuel by biomass, or other type of waste, then we drastically reduce the use of fuel. So for example, in Europe, we are almost at 50% replacement. I don't know if it sounds big or not big for you guys listening to me, but if you think about it, it's industrial process we are talking about here. It's really tons and tons of fuels that were used in the past that we are replacing now. If I continue, and I will spend a little bit of this uh, of time on this slide that might look a little bit complicated for you. But let's first talk about our own waste. We've been working a lot of our own waste. We have reduced it by about half in the last two, three years. And we generate now half a million ton of waste. But in comparison to how much we recover, it's only one for 100. So our effort is both on the waste we generate, but more importantly, on the how much waste we can recover, how much we can increase. And if you look at a typical loop of um, a building, of a normal typical infrastructure or building, you start with design. The way you design a building can really help you reducing the amount of material you use. You can use better, more performing concrete, but less of it. Um, same, you can make roads with less aggregate. So I can hear you already asking a question, why does she say that? Why does she want to sell less concrete, less aggregate? Well, I want because I think we need to go from a volume type of industry to a performance type of industry. The entire world will win if we do that. So let's now, we have that fantastic design. We need raw material to start the construction. And this is where all the waste from my construction and demolition can help. But also an important thing is I need to make sure that all my activities I have a biodiversity restoration plan that makes sure that I return to nature the land better than I got it. Once I have my raw material, I now need to produce. So again, as I said earlier, I will replace the fossil fuels that uh, is made to heat my giant uh, oven, but also I'm looking at energy efficiencies and renewable, and last but not least, reducing water usage and optimizing it is absolutely key. Once not, so now we have produced the cement and we need to build, and this is where we can have an impact by looking at circular materials, circular solutions and services for all the new buildings and infrastructure that we need to develop. Now, instead of building, sometimes what we could do is extend the life of all our infrastructure we have. I mean, a building that lives 20 more years 
is one less building you have to build. And again, I know it sounds quite obvious, but those are quite often those basic obvious things that will really change the world. So expanding the life of the buildings is important. And this is where our solution and product arm um, is coming in. And so that's where we look at how we can do that better. But no matter how good a job we do at that, there will be a moment where that building will need to be demolished. So this is, we have to dispose it, and then we take back the construction and demolition material, back to the raw material, and I've closed the loop. So I can continue. And my last slide will be about what we do at the company. There was, I told you a few things on the previous slide, but you could, also say, well, yeah, but there was quite a few concepts. So what do you actually do today? So today, first of all, 50% of our research and development resources are low carbon and circular solutions, sorry. Um, more than 40% of our patents also concerns low carbon and circular solutions. So we put a lot of energy and innovation because we have to face technical challenges in reducing not only our CO2 footprint, but also increasing our circular economy. We want to make sure that when we put construction demolition waste into our cement or our concrete, it remains as strong and with the same competencies that a concrete made of 100% of virgin material. So I'm going to give you three examples where we do that really well. We have Susteno in, um, in Switzerland here, I am in Switzerland, that's why I say here, um, where we have up to 20% of virgin material replaced by other materials. And this is great, but we could do more. One of the things that is stopping us today to do more is actually norms and standards. So norms and standards are extremely important. You certainly, um, if I built a house for you tomorrow, I'm sure you would rather know that it has been built according to the standards and it will last for a long period of time. But they also should look at the technical evolution that we can do, which means that we can today do more, do more recycling for the same type of strengths. Um, we also have a concrete with 33% of vision material saved. And finally, we have a um, product called like Neo in France, where we actually replace 100% of the vision material there. Now, it's, it's great because not only it means we remove less resource from, from the ground, but more than that, we avoid that waste that we are using to go into landfill. And that for me is absolutely key. So I, this is the, my last slide. Um, I was very happy to share that with you. And uh, I hope we will continue the dialogue. And I know we have a Q&A session coming right after, and I'm looking forward to sharing more with you at that point. Thank you very much.